My right in thinking, Brad, this video is going to go up on my birthday. I think it will. Oh boy, in which case, can I have a drink? Let's do this, guys. Fun fact, for that scene in the Spongebob Squarepants movie where David Hasselhoff appears out of fucking nowhere and saves the day was written into the script before David Hasselhoff had even agreed to star in the movie. Who are you? I'm David Hasselhoff. Hooray! Luckily for everybody involved, David Hasselhoff did agree to appear in the movie and in return he got potentially one of the greatest gifts a human being has ever received. So what gift was this? This was the 12 foot rubber model they made of him to film certain scenes in the movie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. When did they use that? And the other scene where SpongeBob and Patrick are fighting the bounty hunter. Voiced by Alec Baldwin. Did you miss me? On David Hasselhoff's back. <laughs> Back there, for that. A sentence that I just said that is the second oddest thing that's going to appear in this video, thanks to the existence of this image. So Brad, you've got the picture that's behind me right now, in front of you now. What are your comments about this giant rubber model of Hasselhoff? I mean, it, it's, it's kind of terrifying, Carl. <laughs> it is kind of terrifying. Remember as well, that thing's 12 foot long and weighs a thousand pounds. The thing that makes it even more terrifying though is that David Hasselhoff himself was amazed at how realistic it was, commenting that they somehow managed to get all of his freckles and blemishes exactly right. You know, the hair is, it seems like real hair. Every body hair has been individually placed and it wow. is just incredible. Hasselhoff even commented that the skin on the model felt just like his own, which is worrying for me because that kind of suggests that maybe the people who made the prop prowled the streets looking for sun-kissed hobos to harvest. <laughs> So Carl, tell me more about this model. Well, in addition to being worshipped as a god in some parts of Germany, the model costs in excess of $100,000 to make. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's pretty expensive for like... Actually, is it? What's the going rate for a giant 12 foot, 1,000 pound model? I'll, 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 I'll have to call my guy. <laughs> we'll have to have a look. Check on eBay, find out. Let us know in the comments. How much would you pay for a 12 foot long rubber representation of your favourite celebrity? Actually, no. Actually, no. That's a bad question, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, a lot of weirdos on the internet. Let's point out, this model was not anatomically correct. I was gonna, who, who goes online? Like, I, I really fancy Johnny Depp, but I don't want a model of him. I want a 12-foot model of him. <laughs> I don't want life-size Johnny. I want 1.25% Johnny. I want, this, I want the version of Johnny Depp that I see when I go to the cinema. I don't want Johnny in real life. I want the version of Captain Jack Sparrow. I saw on the silver screen, on it towering over me like some sort of obelisk in an oppressive <laughs> dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I miss drinking in these videos. It's, it's a shame, when I drink, these video magic fucking happens. The problem is, we can't record three in a day because I get too drunk by the third one and the third one always suffers. Which is a shame, I'd love it if we had like enough time to record like two separate days. So these are fucking brilliant. Drinking videos are always the best. Do you want to take a guess at where they kept this giant model of David Hasselhoff during filming? Uh, pre presumably some kind of storeroom, right? No. They kept it in David Hasselhoff's house. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because David Hasselhoff's like, just keep it in my house. I only live around the corner. And you know, it gets even better because they asked David Hasselhoff, so what did you do when it was in your house? He went, oh, I pointed it out of my window to freak out my neighbours. So just for a second, imagine when they were making this movie, someone living next door to David Hasselhoff probably looked out of their window and saw David Hasselhoff like, getting his mail or some shit. And, oh, it's David Hasselhoff, let's wave to David. And then looked, and as their vision panned out, saw a giant six foot tall head of David just staring out of his fucking window. People watching home, look at this image. Look at this David Hasselhoff. Imagine looking out of your window and seeing that stare through a neighbor's window. That's like the scene in The Simpsons where Bart's in like Ned Flanders' house and Homer builds in that crazy, scary clown bed. He goes, oh, I want to go home to my house. And he looks through his own window and sees the giant clown. 
I want to go home. No, I don't. So you said at the start that he got a gift for filming. Are you trying to tell me that he kept it? Yes, he did. And um, the story goes that after filming Wrapped, David Hasselhoff was just stood looking at his giant rubber avatar and said to a member of the crew, so what are you planning to do with this after, like, you're done? And the crew member just stood there, like, just, like, shuffling their feet, going, um, we've not actually thought about that, really. Um, do, do you want it? And David Hassel went, yes, and ran into his house and drafted a contract that signed ownership of it over to him permanently. And they signed it and gave him it. His first instinct was to get a contract to make sure it was his. Oh, yeah. Were you... Brad, <laughs> this is Hollywood, man. People, they, people there don't get married without signing a contract, letting people know what's theirs. Of course, David Hasselhoff was well versed in signing contracts. Of course, the, his first reaction was, "I don't want to give it to me," and then someone asks for it back. I want these things to be mine forever. It says a lot about his ego, doesn't it? It does a little bit. Doesn't it? Like his first instinct was to like go get a contract. I hope that his contracts as well have a little picture of his own face on it, saying like, "Don't hassle the hop." So apparently, he owns the trademark to that. Do you ever say, don't hassle the Hoff when you buy a t-shirt? Like, he has officially licensed, don't hassle the Hoff merchandise that you can buy, that he makes money from. So don't, 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 don't hassle the Hoff. Also, this has nothing to do with the video, but I want to point it out. Um, because of the job that I do, Joe, I obviously get sent like links to stuff I might want to write about. Um, one year, I think like two, three years ago, I got an email that nearly changed my life forever when I was told about a David Hasselhoff official cruise. Where you go with other fans of, like, David Hasselhoff is on the fucking cruise. And you go on this cruise with other David Hasselhoff fans and they have screenings of all his movies and they play his album on repeat the entire time and you get to do meet and greets with David and he walks around the ship. And I felt like a good, like, two weeks, we try to convince other people to go with me to this event just to see what a David Hasselhoff cruise would have been like. But well, sadly, it couldn't happen. I hope the entire cruise is on the back of a giant David Hasselhoff. <laughs> the boat just, the boat just looks like him. <laughs> it just pulls into the harbour and it's just this like 200 foot high, massive David Hasselhoff face. Like the SpongeBob movie was an inspiration to us all, David Hasselhoff fans. So, does Hasselhoff still have this? Unfortunately, no, he doesn't. Like a lot of gifts, he eventually decided, I'm tired of this, and sold it in an auction a couple of years later. Because apparently, there are only so many things you can do with a giant rubber model of yourself before you get bored. Who knew? So I actually drank all of my gin during all the various re-recordings had to do that video. So now I'm drinking this port that you may have seen have a cameo in other videos because this video is going to go up on the 2nd of February, which is, for you Americans, Groundhog Day. And for me, it's my birthday. So happy birthday to you, future Carl, sat at home in your underwear watching this video with a pizza. Have a fucking good one, mate. Are you forgetting something, Carl? Oh yeah, it was Brad's birthday as well but he's not important as me. I'm a kidding, I'm kidding. I'm so, I felt so harsh. No, it was Brad's birthday on the 27th, but the 27th was a Saturday. We don't upload videos on a Saturday. Saturday. This goes up on a Friday, and we thought it was a bit weird that it's going to go up on my actual birthday, not to mention it. And also, I need an excuse to finish off this port that's been sat staring at me in Brad's windowsill for the past three, four months. <laughs> so happy birthday to me. Yay. Can't fucking wait for all the uh, comments of, God, I can't believe you turned 40 already, Carl. <laughs> That's going to be the one here. That's the one that always gets me on my book. So I think for the past couple of years, I've got a mate who just said to me every time, oh, man, you look good for 30, mate. It's like, fuck off. I don't know how old I look, and I've always been afraid to ask. Well, I'll I ask for you, Carl. <laughs> People in the comments, how old does Carl I've look? I've always felt I look quite young, but this YouTube business got me fucking haggard, mate. <laughs> Takes that, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? I'm stressed and haggard and looking all old. So I've always been afraid to ask because when I was a younger man, 
I was always quite proud of said for quite a few years, oh yeah, you still look 21. And eventually people just stopped asking for my ID. And the asking ID age in England is 25. So for a couple of years, I felt quite bad about <laughs> Oh, Oh dear. Deary me, eh? You must have some pretty decent stories about like past birthdays. Um, recent birthdays, no. Because my recent tradition is to get really drunk Order a pizza and play through Final Fantasy X, one of my favourite games. And on I've done your, that. On your own? Yeah. That, I, that's I, your birthday. Yeah, because I turn off all my laptop and stuff and don't do any fucking work, don't answer any emails, don't answer any texts. Like, how often I've got to be connected and answer fucking shit. It's just nice to take a day off, that's just for me. And one of my favourite things, obviously, playing video games, drinking, eating junk food. So for me, that's a really fucking good birthday. When I was younger, obviously, I drank all the fucking time. My dad bought me up until my 21st birthday, a bottle of whiskey that was exactly as old as I was. So my 18th birthday, an 18 year old whiskey, 19th birthday, 19 year old whiskey, 20th birthday, 20 year old whiskey. Did you just buy them all at once and then wait a year? Every single <laughs> I'm time? presuming. <laughs> but, um, uh, what I used to do is I used to drink that in the shower of the morning before the party of the night before I used to go out. It's only a little bottle of whiskey. I'm not saying a giant litre. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> didn't spend Good all morning, mo- Carl. Didn't spend all morning in the shower drinking a litre of whiskey. <laughs> the joke I like to make is I start my birthday the, de- the way I was conceived. In a shower with whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite funny. Until my dad went, you're not far off, son. And I went, fucking no, I'm not doing that. Again. No more details, please. <laughs> I stopped doing that as soon as he said... So I mentioned it to him as a joke. And he went, oh, you're not that far off, son. I went, fuck it, I'm never doing that again. And I can't, like, shower beers are now tainted for me. <laughs> One of my greatest, like, ways to relax, the shower beer. It's, somewhat, like, it's the most sacred of all things, drinking in the shower. And my dad ruined it for me. So thanks for that, dad. Cheers. I remember you going on a shower beer. Shower beer is the best. Shower beer is the, like there's nothing better than being like covered in water than just drinking a shower. Um, Have you heard about shower oranges? Shower oranges. There's apparently this big group of people online who are really into shower oranges because when you have an orange in the shower, there's no mess because it washes off them instantly. So they get like almost orgasmic levels of pleasure <laughs> eating. eating an orange in the shower. You know you just what? Wash it all off. On my birthday, I'm going to try eating an orange in the shower. Uh, are we done then, mate? Yeah, that'll do. No, fucking hell. Another day of this day. Oh. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Because <laughs> I hadn't stopped the recording yet. Oh, what? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Prick.